White Rose. Intercepted by Air Force. Players on right side of Robinette. Who catches and throws downfield. Brown is open at the 15. And he goes in for an Air Force touchdown. Good snap. Kick is up. All the way. And it's gone. Hi, I'm Dirk Hobbs, your host of Healthy Coloradans, Profiles in Excellence. Welcome to the storied Falcon Field here in Colorado Springs. September 22nd, 1962, Coach Buck Shaw walked his Air Force Falcons out here on this field to beat the Colorado State Rams 24-0. Since then, coaches like Ben Martin, Ken Hatfield and even Bill Parcells have graced this very field. From 1984 to 2006, Coach Fisher DeBerry ushered in the modern era games. He had a string of winning season and on one of those later teams was a young player from Oregon named Troy Calhoun. As a player coach under Fisher DeBerry, Troy Calhoun graduated from the Air Force Academy, then went on to coach at Ohio University, then at Wake Forest, and had a stint in the NFL with the Houston Texans and the Denver Broncos. And finally, in 2007, Troy Calhoun stepped on the Air Force Falcons football field once again, this time as the Falcon head coach. Profiles in Excellence got to spend a lot of time with Coach Calhoun, learning about his journey right here at the Air Force Academy. What he reveals is that coaching here in particular is like doing it with one hand tied behind your back. Coach Calhoun, coaching college football today has got to be one of the toughest jobs in America. I mean, it is just intense 24-7. What kind of person goes into this business? Uh, probably one that may not always be sane. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, and probably even amped up and multiplied many times over whenever you talk about Service Academy, too. And, right. Uh, a very, very difficult job. I mean, all the things that are involved. Uh, with recruiting, uh, you monitor academics, you monitor conduct, uh, development, uh, things that are involved with admissions. Uh, here at the Air Force Academy, the curriculum mm -hmm. that you're going to have uh, to, to which you're going to be exposed, how somebody's doing a basic training, how they handle in survival training, uh, where are they going this summer, are they going to Italy, are they going to North Dakota, are they going to Texas, right. they get to enjoy the panhandle of Florida, <laughs> but either way they're still working. Um, it's a, uh, it, it literally is. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, not a lot of vacation time, right. uh, and yet right. even uh, even the times maybe where you are with your family, inevitably, uh, there's there, there's not a day that goes by where you really aren't immersed, mm -hmm. even mentally, if uh, if you're riding a bike on a beach, if you get to do that for one day. There are blogs out there, there are websites, you know, the Bleacher Report does stuff like this, you know, where they say, here's five reasons why you would never want to become a head coach of a <laughs> D1 football program. I mean, do you kind of, I mean, you live that, you see that every day. Well, I don't know what those five reasons are. <laughs> well, you don't uh, get to see your family a lot. You know, you don't get that quality time a lot. You're always on the road. It's really, you never can decompress. You know, very true. I think that's why, uh, you know, the fitness part of it is vital. Uh, mm -hmm. You always got to be able to find a way uh, at least five days a week where you can carve out 40 or 45 minutes on those days where you get a chance to run or lift or uh, do something physically that's really, really good for you, maybe to clear your mind a little bit. Sure. Uh, we do make sure you have quality time mm -hmm. uh, with those to whom or with whom you're most close. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to know there's not going to be a whole lot of quantity. Uh, exactly. And that's why it's yeah. vital uh, the times that you do have yeah. uh, to be pretty good at doing math with your 11-year-old daughter uh, <laughs> or make sure your arm's in good shape whenever you got to throw batting practice to your 13-year-old son. Nice, nice. So all the families here, they're close, and you guys can inter interact fairly regularly as to where some of the coaches are kind of separated from their families for a while. Is that a fair statement? Well, we're gone quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at it, uh, the recruiting landscape that we have uh, there are 100, 128 schools that play at the FBS level. Right. Uh, we have the least number of players or recruits from our time zone. Wow. Uh, just because of the uh, the academic requirements here at the academy, 
uh, what you have to do as far as the service obligation where you're going to be, uh, you're going to go serve on active duty for at least five years following graduation from the academy. Right. So we recruit uh, literally coastline to coastline. And uh, that means you're going to be gone a bunch and uh, will absolutely lead the country uh, when it comes to uh, miles earned. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's back up a step and let, let's get to know you just for a little bit. What, what is, you know, you, your journey started in, in Oregon, okay, your life journey. Um, now you're out here at the Academy. What, what's in between? What are the big milestones in between for, for Troy Calhoun? Well, I think, you know, you look back, uh, some of the things for which you're most grateful was the opportunity to be able to come to the Air Force Academy. Um, yep. Uh, grew up in a home where uh, service uh, wasn't required, but you knew it was highly important. Mm -hmm. My dad was a high school teacher. Uh, my mother was an emergency room nurse. And uh, so you knew that community involvement, yep. uh, being able to help others, uh, was something that you just kind of almost without it being codified was nearly law. <laughs> uh, that you do. And so uh, uh, both myself and my sister were fortunate enough to be able to earn a, uh, an appointment to come to the Air Force Academy. Wow. And, um, and just y you knew the importance of education too. Certainly. And uh, so that was the foundation, uh, you know, the values of hard work, being honest, uh, taking care of your body, mm -hmm. uh, somehow try to make those that are, that are around you help them too in an up, uh, uplifting way mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of mutual respect that you develop, the kind of bonds, uh, the quality of relationships that you built is, yeah. uh, you know, just so many of those lessons are applied in other ways in life and, uh, and then certainly the leadership part of it too. Yeah. Uh, when there's a good, uh, j just a backbone and a foundation when it comes to the character traits, then you have a chance to be more effective as a leader also. That's wonderful. So where did the love of the game start? For Troy, oh, probably, uh, probably in a diaper somewhere uh, <laughs> at a very young age. Uh, I still uh, one of the pictures we have on our wall there at home. Uh, Amanda has uh, of each one of our, our family members mm -hmm. of Tyler when he was about one and a half. Ironically, he's holding a football when I was one and a half, and it was really probably the first picture my mom ever had taken of uh of me is is holding the football is so right? uh maybe she knew something back then you and, were genetically uh, wired so to do this. i guess so i <laughs> uh, grew up always uh, my dad's uh, still coaching mm -hmm. high school basketball uh, at age 73. Good uh, so uh you were in a gym uh you were at a baseball field uh you're always involved with the ball of some kind yep. and uh didn't have a whole lot of money. I remember the monthly budgets. At times, we had this little blue book in a drawer uh -huh. that literally you had to keep every receipt every time you went and filled <laughs> up your car. Uh, my mom was trying to go to school at the time to earn a, uh, a two-year degree. For nursing. Uh, to be, yeah, to yeah. be an RN, to be a registered nurse. And um, uh, my dad, the, during the summer when he wasn't teaching at the school, was working at the mill. Mm -hmm. So uh, you knew that uh, it wasn't about money. Yeah. Uh, but, but we had a lot of good memories, and, uh, and sports were a huge, huge part of it, too. Yeah, that was the bonding element in the Calhoun family. Oh, no I'm question. Sorry. You yeah. know, and, and then to play a good number of sports. You sure. know, I think uh, in this day and age, how many times young people, I think, are almost, I want to say pushed, yeah. but are guided that when you're 13 years old, that you, only, you can really only afford to pick one sport, and that's it. And I, yeah. I don't see it that way. Yeah. Uh, I love recruiting a young man. Uh, that may place two or three sports. Mm -hmm. uh, started in three sports uh, at a very high level, or varsity level in high school uh, as a quarterback, as a point guard in basketball, and then a middle infielder in baseball. And yeah. uh, you know, each one, all the things you learn in terms of body control, the competitive spirit, the different friendships you were able to make, yeah. and uh, just so many different situations in which you were put. Uh, are, are great, great experiences. And we're seeing now that the injuries associated with one sport athletes are really complicated. I think they're true. Yeah. You know, at some point there's an overburden or overtax uh, that occurs. Yeah. Because uh, those on other an muscle elbow. groups aren't worked. Yeah. yeah, the balance. You know, you got to have physically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there are things that you do as a basketball player with your ankles and your knees yeah. uh, that are great for your, your movement. Uh, there are things that you do as a baseball player that are great to throw a ball, but you can probably overdo it. Exactly. And, uh, and so you see some of the residuals, you know, maybe a labrum or a shoulder or an elbow yeah. uh, that come forth. Uh, you know, or a volleyball player doing too much violent mm 
mm -hmm. down, you know, downward motion. You know, you do that 12 months out of the year. Does it take Something's a toll? I think out. realistically, yeah. you know, absolutely. Or, you know, our football players, uh, if you're going to line up and block and tackle every single day, you got to be darn good at it. Mm -hmm. But you go run into somebody 365 days out of the year, yeah. at some point your skull's going to tell you, hey, enough's <laughs> enough. Enough. You know, and so... Uh, <laughs> That's where I, I do think it's, I, I, you just want people to be exposed to as many activities as possible mm -hmm. uh, at a younger age. And um, if you are fortunate enough to be able to go play in college, you know, NAIA, Division II, yep. uh, Division I, whatever that may be, uh, I think it's nearly, it's rare that you can really say we got a prodigy at age 11. Now, sure. golf might be a little bit different. Sure. Sure. Um, tennis, or maybe, maybe a distance runner or tennis, yeah. you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, bodies change so much. Yeah. You know, there are those that uh, you think you're going to be a darn good basketball player and all of a sudden you hit a ceiling at 6'3". Mm -hmm. There aren't too many 6'3 centers in college basketball. No, they're not. <laughs> you know, so do I got to find out what it's like to be a defensive end or a first baseman or a catcher, right. you know, in other sports. And just your, uh, you know, the muscle memory. Yeah, uh, the body control, body coordination, the skill level, mm -hmm. and truthfully, the passion and the interests that maybe you have in different activities change also. That's terrific. Well, let's let's fast forward. You get your appointment here to the academy. Um, you end up playing quarterback for the Falcons. Um, you were part of that twelve and one team that that showcase marquee team that they keep pointing back to. What was that experience like? I mean, what was the Air Force playing experience? Uh, it was very good. Yep. I think, uh, especially, you just learn the value of having tremendous teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you do have programs that are well supported, where there's a strong commitment, uh, then ultimately it makes for a little bit better experience sure. for a young person, those that are involved. Yeah. And, um, and really, that's what you carried forth to active duty and beyond, too. Yep. Uh, you feed people well, you make sure they're exceptionally well trained and educated, yep. highly skilled, you know, whatever role that may be. And, uh, and if they end up pursuing things that are outside, being an Air Force officer, uh, hopefully what we've done, we've had them well equipped, so uh, there are other uh, jobs or endeavors that they can pursue. Healthy Coloradans Profiles in Excellence has more with one of America's finest coaches right after this. at the academy did it ever occur to you I mean was coaching always the plan far from it yeah uh, you know you come to the Air Force Academy to the opportunity to grow as a young person uh -huh. uh, you know the character traits that you further want to strengthen and uh, to be a leader to be an officer mm -hmm. uh, to serve your country right. and uh, probably a little bit too uh, what was attractive was the possibility of being able to go to pilot training Wow maybe fly a fast plane <laughs> sure I uh, thought it would be pretty neat and th at that time uh, you did a really really thorough physical at the end of your sophomore or second year here what we call our three degree year right. here at the Academy and, uh, and and the vision had to be absolutely dead on and there was uh, there was no way for any kind of corrective lenses uh, or then to Put a slice across your eye and right. try and knock your cornea back, you know, <laughs> with PRK or yeah. you know LASIK or anything like that. And so um, that that was a little bit of a punch. I would say a punch in the face, but it was a little bit of a sure. uh, an awakening to say, okay, we're going to have to pursue some uh, some other endeavors. I got to change my options here. That's right. And so uh, uh, looked at some business things. Uh, worked in a management information systems in the Air Force, mm -hmm. uh, but there's just something about being around highly energized. Uh, combative arenas, yeah. when done correctly, yeah. uh, the benefits of uh, uh, physically being tested that are healthy not only for your body but for your mind and for your soul too. That's pretty cool articulation of the game, the metaphor of the game and everything else. Very cool. Um, so any aspirations to be a player? I mean when you were coming out of uh, Fisher's program in the late 80s it's like, okay, do I want to play ball here, or I really need to shift gears? And, and Well, I mean, 
probably reality kicks in at some point okay. when you're 21 or 22 <laughs> years old. Now when you're 17, yeah, everybody's uh, going pro. <laughs> there's no doubt you're every bit as good as John Elway. Right now, now you maybe you aren't wise <laughs> enough to know you're only <laughs> five eleven or six feet. Right. Uh, you have an average arm, not quite a rocket arm. Sure. And your feet don't change quite like a uh, like a deer might in terms of the amount of ground you cover and so uh but that's hard to convince a 17 year old of that well sure and uh and i was guilty you know <laughs> and you look back and uh and yet you knew there uh that's why it's so important to make sure that you're well prepared for when the playing part yeah. comes to a conclusion you know and how many times uh you have that conversation with young people when you go into a home mm -hmm. with them and their parents uh, or them and who are their guardians or family members there when you go recruiting it's a form of grieving i would anticipate <laughs> well you <laughs> love some it uh, there's yeah. some uh there's a void there yeah and uh and yet that's why you have to make sure it's filled in other ways you know play pick up basketball uh, go throw batting practice mm -hmm. and uh, you know shoot three pointers and uh, yep. you know run elliptical lift whatever that is that's healthy yep. for a person to do really for the rest of their lives. See what else is out there. So your journey goes from coach coach here uh, under Fisher to Barry, mm -hmm. and then you start to branch out on your own. You go to OU, uh, you go out to Wake Forest. Uh, you've been some, to some great places. When you landed at OU and then ultimately. Wake Forest, I mean, did you feel, yeah, this this is my calling, this is where I belong? Well, for some reason, there's a natural path that occurred there. Now, yeah. um, you know, we left, uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I was a captain in the Air Force, which, pretty good job. Uh, yeah. Had some good OPRs at that time, and maybe had a chance to do some things in terms of a career in the Air Force. Um, took a pay cut, went to Ohio University. Uh, they were worse than bad. <laughs> when we got there, uh, they'd only won 17 games in the previous 10 years. Uh, they were 0 11 the year before we arrived, yeah. and um, and I can remember going and visiting with one of the alumni groups, and somebody said, "Hey, instead of going 0 11, have you ever thought about only scheduling nine or 10?" And uh, <laughs> so that was a little bit of an opener. Yep. Um, but but you know what? I, I, you still look back on all the leadership principles, especially that you learned at the at yeah. the academy and while you're on active duty in the Air Force. And uh, you thought, hey, if there's a way you can apply it uh, at the university level, mm -hmm. uh, go find young people that are bright, that are good students, uh, that have competitive drive about them, but they want to channel that competitive spirit in a way where it truly benefits others, yep. you know, in terms of uh, the team building that has to occur. Uh, then you can still build good, healthy, quality, sustainable programs. Uh, no matter how difficult the circumstances. And this goes back to that coaching thing because there's so much pressure on D1 coaches to create an empire, create that, you know, that Nick Saban environment, whatever it is, you know, that, that says we're going to be the domineering force in, in the NCAA for years and years to come. That's, that's not something you can just manufacture out of thin air. I mean, it, it is a whole apparatus that is around you. Talk about how you, when you left OU and went to Wake Forest, you started to create a winning philosophy uh, that was very apparent. Uh, that was a very strong Wake Forest team. Well, you, you know, you look back, and I, I think what's uh, kind of what's most cognizant now with the uh, being able to use hindsight, uh, <laughs> you know, is you realize at some point, like I said, I think the athletic part has to be taken in, in a proper perspective and context. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the few hours that you do work, uh, or at least a student athlete works uh, on a court or on a field, uh, it's okay to have tremendous drive, you know, to have that kind of fire to you. Yep. Uh, yet at the same time, um, your next play may be your last one. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's a uh, if it's an ACL, uh, if it's a um, in soccer, or if it's a uh, in football, something happens to a shoulder, or sure. baseball, something happens to an elbow, uh, and just I, I do think there's a responsibility as a coach. It's easy to get enamored with all the momentum or all the perimeter activities uh, that are involved, and yet uh, I think there's a disservice that's involved for your young people yep. that uh, that occurs and. Uh, and there's got to be a lot more to it than only, yep. you know, the scoreboard aspect. Just uh, and I think if um, if you look at it only in terms of uh, you know how many bowl games are you going to get to go to, yeah, 
Uh, I think that is very, very short-sighted and probably pretty self-centered, too. Let me ask you this. Is, is that a conversation that's actually happening in some of these programs? Uh, it, how it many bowl worst. games are you going to win, Coach? Or I mean, in the yeah, interview yeah. process? You know, that, uh, is that, that probably depends a little bit by yeah. program by program. You know, I think one of the neat things, whenever you are at a school that truly is committed to the academic end of it yeah. and uh, to the educational pursuits, when I say educational pursuits, that's the books. Yeah. But it's the young person's growth when it comes to their character uh, and certainly some of the leadership uh, leadership skills that they, they, uh, they're they going to develop that uh, they're going to be pertinent for them down the road uh, when they're well beyond playing an activity or sport. Absolutely. So this is a real comprehensive experience here at the Air Force Academy that is unlike almost any in the country. It is unlike any. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, there's some times <laughs> where, uh, probably quite frankly, uh, you, you pull on your hair pretty good, uh, <laughs> where you realize, wait a second now, where, where's the level playing field right. in terms of the docket or schedule that we have in front of us? There isn't one. Um, there's not. You know, yeah. And after a while, at um, uh, some point, I do think you have to embrace the difficulties, mm -hmm. the challenges that are inherent while you work here at the Air Force Academy, especially in a team ball sport. Yeah. Uh, while you're here, there are probably some other activities where there's some offset that can occur. Uh, but in the team ball sports, it's uh, it's tough. It's really, really difficult. Yet at the same time, that's what makes it uh, even more gratifying. Uh, whenever you have seasons where you see a good number of your seniors are able to graduate and throw their hat in the air yeah. at Falcon Stadium and go on a commission to be an Air Force officer. And, uh, and maybe over those four years, they did have a chance to play in a postseason game, a bowl game. And uh, you know, we're not opposed to playing two bowl games, you know, if it's two. <laughs> Absolutely. So map your journey from Wake to here. Did you get a phone call? Did you throw your we name did. in the ring? No, no. Uh, we were at Wake Forest and uh, received a call and uh, asked if we wanted to come work for the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and truthfully, had to think about it. You know, as crazy All as right. that sounds right now, <laughs> uh, Wake Forest was a great, great school. Yeah. Uh, I love recruiting, especially when you feel like you have something truly to offer a young person uh, with a quality of degree. Uh, and energized, just highly, uh, a little bit even the intellectual part of it, you know, in a, in a great, great campus environment. Sure. And, um, and being able to see the transformation that can occur from somebody that's 17, 18 years old to when they're 22 or 23, to be a part of that process uh, is one of truly one of the most rewarding parts of mentoring mm -hmm. or coaching or yep. teaching uh, a young person. Yep. And, um, but it was a chance, especially uh, for football education, uh, to go work in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, which was beyond fabulous. All three years, uh, we played in the playoffs. Yep. And uh, quite a time you were there. It was fun. I mean, yep. each of those three fun. seasons. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now we end up running into the a guy uh, in the playoffs. Uh, Colts had a quarterback. Uh, we got knocked out the first two years, and the guy's name was uh, um, it was Manning. Peyton Manning. Peyton. Was Peyton. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then the third year, we won the AFC West. Uh, we went 13 and three. Uh, I remember playing a playoff game in a uh, Mile High. Uh, just a phenomenally electric atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, we beat the Patriots. Uh, it's like 23 to 10. Right on. And, uh, and then the next week, played for the AFC Championship against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so, uh, three wonderful seasons. Uh, no better place to live than the Front Range, certainly. You, you bet. And uh, you bet. we had a, our second child was born while we lived there in Denver, okay. uh, Amelia. And so uh, we left there and then went uh, went to work uh, with the Houston Texans right. as a quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. Wonderful. And then you get the call to come out here, or yeah, we got the call initially. We're, we're asked to uh, we're asked if we we're interested and said no. Uh, my wife no was, was your first response. It was, yes, sir. Happy darn. Uh, <laughs> my wife was from Houston. Okay. Uh, well, that's had a home. Sister, uh, yeah. sister lived in San Antonio. Uh, so the kids were able to be around all their relatives. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought we were building something really strong there at Houston uh, with Coach Kubiak. And yep. uh, wanted to stay in the NFL. Uh, I just thought in terms of especially quality of life with your family. Yeah. When your off-season was an off-season. And... Um, <laughs> And then just woke up early the next morning and thought, no, maybe we better find out a little bit more uh, really? about the Air Force Academy. Okay. And how, how long did it take you to make that call? Well, I think kind of knowing your gut. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you'd never be shy about relying on instinct. Yep. And um, 
so end up coming back to the academy. Yep. Uh, I remember the first team meeting, first few days of spring practice, uh, got a pretty big rock in your gut thinking, yeah. why in the world did we ever do this? <laughs> uh, just wondering, how, there. We, how are we going to be competitive? Uh, yeah. Just looking uh, at the difference in size, uh, mm -hmm. height and weight especially. Yeah. And uh, Now, granted, that's coming from the National Football League, uh, yeah. where you were you know, coaching Andre Johnson and Mario Williams and Demi, I mean, some pretty talented football players. But they're huge. Uh, and their movement, I mean, yeah. just their their change of direction and their acceleration and uh, like you said their length and their size yeah. uh, and just that level of play yeah. uh, is scary good. So it's a culture shock to come back, almost come back. And with, with your eyes it is, it's you certainly know, for what eyes. you witness. <laughs> um, it was something that was pretty drastic, especially when you come here to the academy yeah. and, uh, and the bodies aren't real big. Yeah. Um, you don't have guys that have uh, Massive backsides because so much of football is power, mm -hmm. right? In the back of your legs and in your rump area. Sure, uh, yep. those are good football players. Got to have. And um, we're here. We had some guys that certainly didn't have any trouble seeing their belt buckle <laughs> or uh, recognizing their shoelaces. So uh, that was a uh, yeah. that, that, that that was a change. I bet. So you're coming in. I mean, certainly it's going through your mind. I mean, Fisher's leaving. This is one of those coaches in the American lexicon that's, you know, kind of the Lou Holtz conversations, you know, they're always in that iconic realm. Mm -hmm. You and your wife are talking about this, I'm sure, you know, we're going to fill Fisher's spot now. Uh, yeah, you just never felt like that was possible to do. You know, you look at the eight years that uh, that, that staff had yeah. you know, here at the Air Force Academy while they were in the Mountain West Conference. Um, they did a phenomenal job, yep. incredible job. You know, not only on the field, uh, where I think they went to a couple of bowl games during those seven or eight years, uh, but but also just the influence that they had on the young people here at the academy. Not just football players, right, right. but the cadets as a whole. Absolutely. And, uh, and ultimately, that's why you're here. Yeah. You know, to have a positive impact, uh, to help people uh, gain the necessary lessons, especially leadership experiences that they're gonna need. Yeah. And uh, it happens uh, here, it's a, uh, you know, you're drinking out of a fire hose often <laughs> when you're 19 or 20 years old. Yep. Uh, probably the other part is, uh, you know, you take a little bit, I'm sure you especially feel this while you're going through basic training, yeah. uh, where you think, are we trying to mold and build people like you do with steel? Or we throw you right in the fire and then we pound and thump on you and uh, what comes out of somebody that really does have a pretty sturdy metal about them, and uh, it's not quite that brutal, but yeah. uh, <laughs> but there's we, we, there, there's a fortitude, uh, and there's something that we want in those that do graduate from the Air Force Academy. Absolutely. And, um, the filters and the strains that are applied not only during the admissions process, uh, but while you're here too are necessary mm -hmm. and uh, and it's not for everybody. It's not for any, you know, everyone to come to school here at the Air Force Academy. We'll have more with head coach Troy Calhoun on Healthy Coloradans Profiles in Excellence right after this. perceptions about getting on grounds, you know, becoming an avid football and, and athletics programs fan here? Well, you know, the biggest thing you want is you want just overwhelming support for our cadets in general. Yeah. And, uh, you know, athletics are a part of that. Uh, it could be uh, some of the other uh, activities in which they're involved, how much it means to our young people here at the academy, and, uh, and the kind of vibrancy that in turn the academy hopefully brings to our community. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, anytime you have, uh, you know, basketball games or football games or uh, parades or graduation, goodness, how much that does for our hotels and our well, restaurants sure. and our yeah. rental car business and economic uh, development. You know, and it, it's it's super. <laughs> I mean, phenomenal for the area. Yeah. And uh, you know, so often we're approached, or at least I am, as the head football coach, asked if we should move certain games to other areas. You know, should we play a service academy game in Texas or in Georgia or something like that? And they're uh, 
there are parts that are appealing to that, yet at the same time, there are things that you want to keep that you'd like to be a part of the fabric, the essence of yeah. Colorado Springs. Absolutely. So a, a little bit more about, you know, how can we draw, because your dynamic, uh, Annapolis is dynamic, West Point's dynamic, changed recently, okay? Sequestration, mm -hmm. all the big money from the government went away. Now, Air Force and the other two academies are really having to kind of do what other NCAA D1 programs do. Yeah, universities. Yes. You know, it's not just on the athletic part of it, but, uh, you know, moving forward, uh, very progressive mm -hmm. and uh, very pursuant. Uh, to cultivate and build necessary bonds and relationships that uh, that are going to require point blank some fiscal donations yep. and uh, it's going to be necessary in order to run a world-class institution in all ways you know academically the leadership experience that uh, the cadets have and uh, and then athletically too uh, it's going to be very much a necessary part you know and so uh, the partnership that's uh, that's going to be required uh, you have to have a, and be able no, it doesn't require, require great creativity, uh, but your, uh, your venues, you know, whether they're restrooms, whether they're concessions, uh, and those necessary amenities, mm -hmm. uh, the, the egress that occurs or, uh, you know, making the ease of parking uh, to sure. attend different areas, whether it's a uh, graduation parade, mm -hmm. a, uh, a hockey event, uh, some of the pre premium seating options that you have to have in the 21st century. Right. If you don't have club seats and you don't have better suite options and so forth, then a lot of the corporate entities are going to go somewhere else too when it comes to uh, entertainment options. And uh, you know, there, there's some responsibility that we have as a is not only the academy but alumni community and uh, and then in Colorado Springs also yeah. to truly make this a world class city. And uh, you look at so many other cities across the country a similar size, and, uh, and we can get there too. Absolutely. You know, when it comes to, uh, you know, entertainment options, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to being extremely uh, sustainable and uh, in building with economic options that, uh, that help, uh, help this region. You know, it's interesting. I, I've heard a lot of people in the Blue and Silver Club in particular, they talk about this is probably one of the best, most intimate football settings there are in football. It's unbelievable. I mean, truly, yeah. uh, you know, for what's involved, when you really look at a ticket price, yeah. Yeah. a parking price, yeah. you know, I go to a concert someplace and I'm paying a little bit more than five or ten dollars, you right. know, and uh, yep. especially to be that close uh, to the game venue. Yep. And, uh, and then more than else, what just jumps in your soul to feel those chills, you know, on your neck and down your arms when you see the cadets, when they march onto a field prior to a kickoff. Yeah. Uh, that's a big you deal. Know, those that land on the parachutes, uh, you know, that's, and then the splendor of being able to see a, a jet go over the top prior to kickoff. It's unlike any other activity yep. you'll, uh, of which you'll ever be a part, Rattles let alone a, a sport or anything. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just absolutely awesome that way. Yep. And, uh, and our part too, you know, to share how grateful we are for those that do come out and support uh, our academy teams and our academy as a whole. You get to know these boys for quite a few years and you, you, you know, you bleed on each other, you cry on each other's shoulder. Talk to me about letting those boys go and you know where they're going. Well, you do. Uh, or, you know, probably even more so is where you may not know where they're going. Okay. And, uh, yeah. you know, the level of courage that's involved to make that kind of commitment. Um, you know, the lessons that you've taught them about what, we're, what real loyalty is all about, what integrity means, uh, to be trustworthy, and being able to stand knee to knee and hip to hip and shoulder to shoulder along somebody else, that's real teamwork. And ultimately, that's what we want to build and instill in a young person here at the Air Force Academy. How do you personally process uh, when you get the news that some of your boys have been in harm's way and maybe didn't come back? Well, it's a, uh, you know, they're going to be required to, uh, to carry out some very dangerous missions. And, and if anything, it only heightens the, uh, the admiration that you have for each and every cadet that comes to the Academy. Uh, at age 17 or 18, they clearly know what's involved, not only when they come to the academy, but you know when it's time to go serve on active duty for a minimum commitment of at least five years. Yep. 
And that's another thing that the guys know when they're coming into this program is that, you know, the, the big sponsorships, the big TV stuff, uh, and even the thought of a, a section or national championship is, is going to have to be very, very well earned. Yeah, well, you just, um, the view you know, what you take for the reason why you come here to the Air Force Academy. And, uh, you know, our mission, I think, is very clear cut. We want to produce leaders of character that are well equipped uh, with the internal fiber, um, the, 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 letter, the level of leadership skill, and then uh, pertinent job talents to make it where they're going to be outstanding second lieutenants in our Air Force. And, and then for the other, uh, other things in which they partake uh, when they're done serving as officers too. Certainly you're looking at your legacy and the footprint you're going to leave here, which is already off to an amazing start. Um, talk to me about how or what it is you want to make sure you leave behind. Just, you know, I think you know, the biggest thing is you're part of a team. Let's have a... I think you have great enthusiasm, you can have tremendous drive, do it with some class, do it with some dignity and some grace. Just because uh, just because you have that doesn't mean you have to be any less bold or aggressive or, or com any less competitive. And, uh, and yet ultimately, uh, those that do graduate, mm -hmm. uh, we run a, uh, a demanding program, a very disciplined one. Uh, and so there are going to be some that maybe don't, aren't quite able to adhere to, uh, to our culture. And, uh, and yet, oh, those that do, yeah. uh, how fired up you get to think of what they're doing when they're captains or some of the things they yeah. may do when they're colonels or generals. And I can see right road. here just being this close. I mean, you feel that. I mean, this is, oh, this is coming uh, right from the That's what burns heart. in you. Yep. And every day when you wake up, yep. um, I mean, we got a spur and we got a drive and a passion about us uh, that we want to share, but we want to do it in a way where it truly helps them as a, as a man. You know, or as a woman, mm -hmm. and uh, and that, that that's not just the mission of the academy because that's our job. It's truly what uh, what we love. Wonderful. Thank you, Coach Calhoun. You bet. Yes, I, sir. Dirk. I appreciated getting to know you and, and learning about how you view things. Thank that you. was fun. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate that. Cheers.